Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Monday, February 22nd, 2021, and I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Shaken Analytics. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Shaken Analytics. Head over to shakenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for that free email where I get a lot of the content for this show, give you daily stock ideas to consider upon further analysis. That hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So I hope everybody had a great weekend. It's Monday. We weren't here last Monday because of the holiday. So let's dig into it. Uh, obviously, a lot going on, but uh, let's see if we can distill it down for you. U.S. equities were mixed on Friday. S&P 500, NASDAQ, and Russell 2000 all declined on the week. Treasuries weakened again with the curve continuing to steepen. Dollar was weaker on the major crosses. Gold finished up 10 basis points but lost more than 2% on the week. WTI crude uh, closed lower by about 2.1%. Now, at the sector level on Friday, uh, it was really a story of cyclical outperformance. Materials, energy, and industrials, and financials for that matter, uh, were your top four groups. While on the underperforming side, utilities and consumer staples, so your more defensive feel, uh, were your laggards on the day uh, on Friday. Now, as we get to the desk this morning, uh, S&P futures are under some pressure, down about 70 basis points uh, after that lower week last week. Asian markets were mixed overnight. China was down 1.5%. Hong Kong was off more than 1%. Japan, however, bucked that trend and was up by about 50 basis points on the day. European equities are weaker. Treasuries are also weaker. So we have this dynamic of equities and treasuries uh, weaker. And treasuries are weaker on the heels of that big backup in yields last week. A lot of people are starting to pay attention uh, to the path of, of treasury yields. And I think more importantly, what we need to focus on is speed of advance, if it is in fact... Um, going to continue to move higher. The dollar is slightly stronger against the euro and yen. Gold is up 1.1%. Uh, and we'll take a look at the gold chart a little bit later on in this show here. Some interesting dynamics at play uh, there. Crude oil is up 80 basis points to start the day. And that's the framework. And that's the high-level commentary that brings us into this new week that starts off with um, equity markets here in the U.S., the mains the three main uh, ETFs that we look at day in and day out. Uh, the way I would say it is we're starting to work off overbought conditions. I remember the past couple of weeks, we've been highlighting the fact that markets are overbought here in the near term. That's our, our at Shaken Analytics overbought oversold indicator uh, that, that we highlight on, on our charts here. And the majors have been overbought. Now the Qs and IWM are starting to come out of those overbought conditions and moving towards, but not quite at, oversold levels. SPY is still overbought in the near term. So let's start to think about uh, support, resi you know, support resistance. Where, what's the playbook? And the playbook is largely unchanged. Um, we've been highlighting now for the past couple of weeks, overbought, right? Calibrate your aggression levels based on overbought, oversold. Uh, support in the near term for SPY. We're actually bumping up near term support to 370, 380. Then obviously 340 below that is the level that is kind of our line in the sand for trend. Q's 315, 320. So kind of bumped up the high end of the near term support zone. But 300 is the major level in play from a trend perspective. And I think what's interesting um, is this dynamic of being able to kind of carry two thoughts at the same time. What is the trend, big picture trend? It's up, but in the near term, choppiness, which we've been highlighting. And you can kind of see it here on these charts. We traded at all time highs, but we've been overbought. And so now we're getting choppy, right? And, and, and you know, when I teach a class on, on technical analysis to college seniors, and you know, one of the things I expressed to them you know, early when we learned about just the concept of trends is how a number of trends can all be at play at the same time, right? So you could say that we are in a short-term downtrend within an intermediate term consolidation within a long-term uptrend. And all three of those trends are true at the same time. This is where timeframes matter and become important, right? So for us, for the work that we're doing for the roadmap, trend is still up. Near-term choppiness, we're overbought within the context of that uptrend. We would love to see, as we talk about, oversold conditions or closer to oversold conditions while support levels hold. And that says maybe become more aggressive on the long side. 
right? Trend is still up until proven otherwise, and we're going to stick with that case. Uh, let's talk about our market in a minute. What are we writing in the note today? Well, uptrend in place, but patience is still needed in equity markets, right? That's us working off those overbought conditions, and I just kind of highlighted that. Fixed income is extended to the downside. I ran a screen over the weekend, a uh, simple screen. Uh, I wanted to look for fixed income products, so fixed income ETFs uh, that are more than that have a Z score, uh, 21 period Z score, 200 period Z score, uh, both less than two, right? So essentially more than two standard deviations below a 21 day average and a 200 day moving average. And um, a lot of the fixed income products hit that screen. A lot of fixed income ETFs, right? Just kind of a heads up. That's where you're at. At the same time, uh, I ran it in the other direction on co commodities. And you know, so some of the commodities that we track uh, are somewhat extended to the upside. So what does that mean? It's the same as overbought, oversold, right? What's the trend? Where are we within that trend? You know, if I was going to, if I'm bullish commodities, I have to ask myself, do I want them right now? And I'd say we're somewhat extended to the upside within that trend. Uh, gold is holding key support. Uh, so the, will the bulls get a bounce is the key question. We'll look at that. And as I said, futures point to a lower open here today. Let's hit our power bars now. Uh, power bar ratios from the major indices. You can see um, the mixed bag on Friday. Uh, Dow, nine to four bulls to bears after being flat on the day. S&P down slightly, 150 to 47 bulls to bears. So still healthy. I mean, greater than three to one uh, ratio. Almost three to one for the NAS. 26 to nine, uh, which lost 44 bips on Friday. Now, Friday was all about cyclical reopening, reflation, and themes that were leveraged to that. So you see a big pop, small caps, uh, up 2% uh, and a rebound in the ratio, 770 to 119 bulls to bears there. Uh, bonds, same theme, downtick, sending yields higher. Materials, same theme, up 1.82%. 11 of four bulls to bears for the materials. Um, so you can see that, you know, Friday was very much a reflation, reopening day. And you'll see that in the leaders when we look at that in just a moment. So according to the chicken power bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks, strongly bullish. Uh, stock of the day that I'm highlighting, uh, you know, Things, you know, reopen reinflation, things levered to advertising makes sense to me. Uh, IPG, interpublic group, bullish stock, strong trend, strong industry group, overbought, oversold indicator, entering oversold conditions um, for this stock that is outperforming. So if I was looking for ideas, setups like this look compelling to me. Um, upon further analysis, I see a buffer of support in the 22 to 24 range, right, which holds our long term trend line. So I think as long as you're above that level, odds favor a continuation to the upside within this framework. So we're starting to, as the markets work off those overbought conditions, we want to start to look for oversold names within leading areas of the market. IPG fits that bill. Let's hit our sector tracker now, moving over the last uh, five days of trading. Um, you can see that, I mean, if something doesn't scream cyclical reopening, reflation, I don't know what does. Energy, fins, materials, industrials, top four and positive over the past five days of trading. I mean, that screams one of the major themes that, that, that we've been talking about since the summer, which is a inflation, reflation, reopening, leverage yourself to that type environment. And you're seeing it. It's playing out. Middle of the road, discretionary comms, REITs, and staples, uh, underperformers past week of trading, tech, industry, uh, utilities, and healthcare. Maybe with tech lagging, you can understand why the broader indices are choppy, right? Tech is... 25% of the S&P 500, big portion. So when, when your largest sector is becoming choppy, um, your market, overall, you're probably going to become choppy. The key then is to look for leadership. Skirt to the relative strength. Skirt to the alpha. Right, And that's the difference between doing the work and trying to outperform and just being content to be average. And just owning the index, you know, if you own the index, what you're saying is, 
I'm content to be average. And that's fine. A lot of people don't have the time or the skill set to devote to try and outperform. So skirt to the average, especially if you're a long-term investor, U.S. market tends to trend up over time. So skirting, you know, being average, it's probably fine for most people. But if you're looking to outperform, this framework here could be helpful. Industry and in focus, retail services, past six months, massive outperformer. A lot of this has to do with that spike in GameStop. Take a look at the chart. But some names, Ingalls Markets, Marine Max, Foot Lock are all very bullish. But, you know, you get that parabolic stop on the GameStop, parabolic run on the GameStop, and now we're consolidating here. Still an outperformer, overbought, oversold indicator, working higher, but it's a bullish fund and a strong trend. Probably needs to do some work on the consolidation after building the left side of a parabola. Uh, we'll see how this one plays out, but there was a lot of interesting dynamics at play with this one uh, in and around GameStop. Let's take a look at what's trending now. We're going to run through these quickly. Albemarle uh, rebounding, Deer, FCX, Holly Frontier. Uh, if that doesn't scream, uh, commodity trade, reopening trade, reflation trade. I don't know what does. Deer in the ag space, earnings up 10%. Freeport rallying with copper. Stock was up 20% last week. Holly Frontier is an energy company, right? So that, that bullish commodity inflation theme that I've been pounding the table on uh, for months, you're seeing it play out across the board. You're seeing it. Those are the opportunities, or they have been, right? The question is, where are we now? Probably a little extended. Uh, close it out on the leaderboard with Carnival. Again, part of the reopening. Uh, loser side of the board, uh, whole logic, uh, down with QDEL, QDEL earnings. So down in sympathy there, uh, down 8%, uh, HOLX. West, WST. Earnings take 5% out of that stock. ZTS didn't see anything company specific. Perkin Elmer was a name that I liked and just has not worked out. Uh, bled out, was lower all four days last week, culminating with a down 4% move on Friday. Keys uh, earnings report took 4% out of that stock. Let's hit it now. Here are the treasuries extended to the downside. So the stuff we haven't liked is in a downtrend, but is somewhat extended. Again, I told you, I ran some, some screens over the weekend just to determine uh, how extended, and it's it's more pronounced the further out on the curve you go, right? Which jives with the narrative of, you know, not a narrative, it's happening, a steepening yield curve and more weakness further out on the curve. That makes sense. We and everybody else have been talking about it. So here's TLT. This is long duration treasuries, IEF, intermediate, right? So this is 20 year plus, this is seven to 10, and this is like one to three, IEI. So you can see the further out on the curve you are, the more pronounced the downtrend, which has led to a steepening of the yield curve. So when you're wondering why financials are breaking above 2007 highs, this chart here is a big part of that story. And you see how we connect the dots, the intermarket analysis all comes together. At the same time, commodities are extended to the upside, okay? Uh, going in order here, DBC is broad-based commodities, right? But a lot of times, you know, broad-based commodity funds, you know, one or two big commodities like oils ripped uh, could be the culprit. But in this case, I don't think that it is, right? So we are extended. These are 50-day moving averages. We're extended. But look at the ags. A little extended as well. Look at base metals. A little extended, right? All 52-week highs, so we'd like to see that. But the point is, it's not just one. It's not, it's not, you know, oil. A lot of people are saying, well, look at oil. It's ripped. It's back to 60. We get the freeze in the middle of the country, everything that's going on in Texas. So, no, this, these trends have been in place uh, for a while. And it's broad-based. It's not just, you know, one commodity like oil pulling the entire complex higher. It's, it, you know, ags, base metals, right? And it's just, you know, copper, your steel. So it's all playing out. Uh, finally, here's gold testing support again. Um, in and around the 1750 to 1800 level below the 50 day, um, hasn't broken yet. If you're bullish gold, you want to see this hold. What's interesting to me is that not oversold on the pullback. So that's kind of interesting. If it's going to hold, it's going to hold from here. And it probably makes sense to start paying attention, uh, to gold a little bit here in the near term, one way or the other, we're either going to hold bounce and set up a resumption of the uptrend, or we're going to fade.
So that's going to wrap us up. Have a great Monday. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.